So it's an interesting question. Will China pull us out of the economic crisis? And I assume by us you mean the rest of the world. Well, without China's participation in the quarterly uh, bond auctions of the United States, interest rates would be much higher. There would be more illiquidity in our financial markets. So, to a great extent, China has been a force of stability uh, throughout the financial crisis and providing a uh, buyer for our treasury bonds, in addition to uh, other OECD countries. Uh, Japan and Europe, the G7, are major buyers of U.S. bonds, but China has uh, also been a significant buyer. Without that source of liquidity, we would have been in a much worse financial crisis. To the extent that uh, China is still has a huge trade surplus and the United States still has a huge trade deficit, this capital flow or cycle of capital uh, flows will continue uh, where uh, capital uh, surpluses, dollar surpluses, uh, as a result of the trade surplus building up in the Chinese central banks, um, commercial banks will continue to be uh, invested back in dollar-denominated assets as well as European and uh, commodity-based assets in uh, Africa and uh, Latin America. So China is a large uh, buyer in, in the world market of commodities both uh, soft commodities as well as uh, energy and metals, and that will continue to be a stimulus in those sectors, as well as the financial stimulus from the purchase of bonds. Uh, as far as um, the MET being a manufacturing center, China obviously has um, a lower uh, la labor rate than uh, all the G7 countries, but there are other countries in Southeast Asia that have are beginning to uh, compete with China uh, over the last several years, including Vietnam has, for example, has a very strong software sector. And that's uh, clearly small compared to uh, India's software sector. And the Chinese software sector is, is enormous. Uh, they're one of the top five software producers in the world. New, Newsoft is uh, one of the largest software um, outsourcing firms in China. Uh, they have a major presence here in Dalian, uh, and they work with uh, many Fortune 500 companies, uh, helping them save money uh, in their outsourcing and uh, software development and maintenance of software. So I think that to the extent that uh, there is a lot of uh, economic activity and uh, in China, and the growth rate is between 6 and 8 percent, depending on the sector. Uh, there will be continue to be sector-specific stimulus of uh, corresponding sectors in the world economy. But I think it's important to rank these sectors by uh, order of magnitude of stimulus and recognize that uh, China is both an importer and an exporter of capital and an importer and exporter of commodities and an importer and exporter of, uh, of technology. Uh, for example, solar cells here in uh, Dalian. Uh, the solar PVC is being produced for the world market at uh, very uh, competitive rates here in Dalian. So I think it's important when you ask such a broad question, will China pull us out of the economic crisis, one has to define uh, which sector over what time frame and what are the competitive uh, elements within each sector where China does play uh, a role, either as a buyer or as a, as a seller, uh, to uh, collaborate to produce increased economic benefits for counterparties. And so I think this question is very general and requires uh, more specificity and, uh, let's say, corollary questions in order to come up with uh, a more scientific answer that's more precise. Um, I know that some people have said yes to the question and some people have said no. Uh, clearly, um, I think the answer is net yes, that there is a positive economic stimulus coming from uh, Asia in general because most of the growth in uh, the world is coming from Asia now. Uh, whereas 
Europe and the United States uh, are just coming out of recessions and economic growth is negative in certain sectors and positive in other sectors. There's still a lot of deleveraging going on in the United States, whereas there's been a very high savings rate in China and they did not have the same degree of leverage that the United States and Europe had in their uh, housing sectors and their commercial real estate sectors and in their uh, banking sectors. Uh, there was less, there was not as much speculative excess in, in China in their financial markets. So I think that when you survey the economic landscape of China and analyze uh, the sectors that are uh, providing economic stimulus to the rest of the world, uh, it's important to look at the sectors that have the potential of pulling certain sectors out of the economic crisis. I don't see China becoming a major buyer of U.S. real estate in the near future. I don't see China uh, exporting a lot of electric cars to the United States in the near future. I don't see uh, the RNB being devalued at a significant rate in the near future. Uh, if, it, if the RNB were devalued, that would destabilize uh, the United States. Uh, it would also destabilize China's portfolio, which is denominated in dollars. So the Chinese have a dilemma in that they uh, do not want the U.S. dollar to be destabilized. They want to continue to buy dollar-denominated assets, including treasury bonds, and uh, they want those asset values to remain stable as uh, measured in the dollar RMB exchange rate. So, on balance, I would say it's a wonderful question because it provokes a very important debate, but one needs to disaggregate and deconstruct this question in order to have a higher degree of specificity about what sectors are stimulated by Chinese economic growth and also look at the competitive matrix of each uh, sector globally and see what percentage China contributes to imports and exports in each sector. And to that extent, good luck in that research. It will, uh, a lot of that research has already been done by think tanks and economists focusing on the U.S., China, U.S., uh, European, U.S., African, U.S., Latin American economic bilateral relationship. And I think that is a good starting point, is to look at uh, large capital flows between uh, China and the world and look at sector-specific import-exports and uh, try to make some deductions. So good luck in that research. And again, thank you for tuning in to this Davos debate.